Hawaii, a land like no other. Tourists flock in by the millions to see massive volcanoes, special geese, and of course, the Hawaiian soda can shape you can't find anywhere else in the world. But why does Hawaii have a soda can shape you can't find anywhere else in the world? The answer is simple. Because they can. Well, because their cans can. I mean, because their cans can can different than… never mind, it, it's just economics. The most obvious difference between Hawaiian cans and regular cans is the ridges around their neck, which are sort of like flourless lays for cans if you don't think about it too hard. But the most important difference here isn't the neck ridges at all, it's the diameter of the lid. A regular non-Hawaiian can lid has a diameter of 2 and 1 8 inches, just over a thousandth the diameter of the Epcot golf ball. But a Hawaiian lid is a whopping 2 and 3 8 inches, also just over a thousandth the diameter of the Epcot golf ball, but critically a quarter inch bigger than the normal lids. The Hawaiian lids, known as 206s, were actually the industry standard for a while, having mostly run the gargantuan 211 lids out of town between 1987 and 1988, because in the can biz, aluminum is money. And the aluminum in a can's lid is more than twice as thick, and uses more than twice as much material as the rest of the can, making smaller lids a great way to cut your can manufacturing costs. Sure, you only save a shred of aluminum per can, but if you're manufacturing billions of cans a year, it adds up pretty quickly. And just imagine what you could do with all that extra aluminum. You could make a cool bike, or a smartest business guy trophy, or, you know, a bunch more cans. But because humanity's greed knows no bounds, the rest of the world didn't stop at the 206 lids. They kept shrinking the lids until they reached that nearly microscopic 202 size most of us enjoy today. But Hawaii never got the memo. Why? Surprise, it's economics again. Canned beverages comprise what economists call a weight-gaining industry, and not just because of the physiological impact of sucking down Diet Coke like it's air. In this case, weight-gaining means that as the product goes from raw materials to, well, product, it gets heavier. Which also means that as soda gets manufactured and packaged, it gets more and more expensive to transport. Up to 94% of the contents of a soda can is just carbonated water anyway. Are you going to pay to ship water to an island? Not if you want a shot at that smartest business guy trophy. To save on transport costs, soda companies manufacture and bottle their products relatively close to the point of sale. So wherever you buy your soda, it's probably not coming from that far away. If you're in New York City, for example, your Pepsi is likely coming from one of the three bottling plants within city limits. So like most other places, Hawaii soda is bottled locally. But because it's so remote, companies save on transport by using locally manufactured cans too. And if you're looking for Hawaiian-made cans, look no further than the one can factory in the state, the Ball Corporation Metal Beverage Packaging Plant in Kapolei, Oahu. If you know the Ball Corporation, it's probably for those little mason jars your neighbor sells her homemade jams in. But they also make about a quarter of the 180 billion cans manufactured worldwide every year. Cans are a super high volume product, which means you can get economies of scale even at really, really big scale. The Hawaiian can market is large enough to support one high volume factory like the ball plants, but not a second. It's kind of a Goldilocks situation if Goldilocks had been looking to dominate the tropical can market rather than eat bear porridge. The Kapolei plant supplies cans to everyone from Coca-Cola, which has a bottling plant just 30 minutes away, to Pepsi, Hawaiian Sun, and soon HAI. We're using Ball Corp cans for our new small batch IPA, Pops, as interesting. The plant makes about a million cans every day, which isn't many in the grand scheme of beverage manufacturing. It would barely cover my own LaCroix habit. And while globally it pays off to swap 206 lids for 202s, in a market as small and remote as Hawaii, changing all the equipment in the can factory, not to mention the bottling plants, to suit the larger lid is just too expensive to be worth it. So rather than invest in overhauling the entire archipelago's can infrastructure, Hawaii just sticks to the 206s. So next time you're in Hawaii, crack into that giant lid and bask in all that extra aluminum. There's truly no better way to enjoy the hazy, tolerable taste of hops as interesting. Okay, so hops as interesting isn't real, but if you want to support this channel and a ton of your other favorite creators, we have a very real, very great option for you, Nebula. Nebula is a streaming site my creator friends and I built, and it gives everyone a better deal. We get a bigger cut of the revenue, and you get early access to new videos with zero ads, and the exciting big budget exclusive originals your subscription pays for. Stuff like Polyphonic Magazine, where Polyphonic interviews some of the most exciting musicians working today, or Abigail Thorne of Philosophy Tube's already award-winning, sword-fighting, Shakespeare-improving upcoming premiere The Prince, or Wendover's own Jet Lag The Game, where you can watch my writers and I race around the world and break it down post-game in our Nebula exclusive after show, The Layover. And if you use the link nebula.tv HII, all that will only cost you $3 a month, a 40% discount. 
Maybe that offers a more sustainable and honestly more fun way to make and share these videos. So sincerely, thank you so much for supporting it.